Castle Drogo was built um, in the early 20th century uh, for the grocery magnet uh, Julius Drew, who you see behind me here. He didn't start building Castle Drogo until he was in his 50s. Um, and he um, commissioned uh, Sir Edwin Luttians, um, the great British architect, uh, to create a castle for him. I think he really wanted something very solid and something that, that very much looked and behaved like a castle. The castle has um, had issues with water penetration ever since it was built. Um, during construction they realised there were some issues with the application of the waterproofing layer which was a natural asphalt. Over the years, the, the, over a few years actually, the, 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 the asphalt started to deteriorate and the the Druze took all the slabs off, all the granite slabs off the roof. You can still see some on the chapel, which we've redone. So over the years, it's been repaired and repaired. Um, the Trust did a lot of repairs in the 80s. You know, people often ask, where they often say, well, if it's leaked from day one, why, um, why now? Why do we do, need to do it now? Well, the water penetration has got to the point where um, it's putting uh, the fabric of the building at risk. We're now in the scullery, um, and as you can see, there's quite a lot of damage here. We've got water sort of coming down the wall at the moment. Here there's um, a, a, a Perspex uh, set of windows being put in, because the, the windows that were here um, have actually corroded away so badly um, that it was causing a lot of damage. So the, the idea was to take the windows out um, and try and just to sort of stem the flow of water into the building. Um, as the water comes in, it actually starts to corrode the ends of the steel work and this then affects the bearing um, in the steel and has cracked all the, the concrete away. Plus has also cracked the lintels on the, um, ab above your head. This was just falling down and coming in on people's heads. So we now know that we're at the most urgent um, point at which to get this work done. If we can stop the water coming in now, we can halt the deterioration of the steelwork. Um, when furniture can be moved around, we can protect it um, in situ, if you like, um, at the moment. Um, but one of the really important things about this collection is are the items of furniture which were designed by Luttians himself. They're particularly in, in the servants' areas um, and they're fixtures and fittings, so they're sort of attached to the building, if you like. And the other thing about our collection is that it is a family collection. It's important because it's within its context. If we have to remove it from its context, then we're taking away a really important element of the story that's related to all of those objects. What we've decided that asphalt's not the right thing for this roof, um, and we're going to try and use a, a different system completely. The system we're using is a, um, uh, a, a like a felt product. Um, it's a bowder. It's a elastomeric sort of felt, which will allow for the expansion and contraction of the, the building. And then on top of that is a little drainage layer, granite chip on top, and then we're going to replace all the granite slabs on the roof. So we'll have a, this nice uh, roofscape again, uh, as Lutchens designed it originally. Um, but it's taken a while because we've had to go through all the old photographs, drawings, and actually sketch all these slabs back on, because they, they're all, each roof's got a slightly different design. So the chapel gave us an idea, but as you can see, each area of this roof is slightly different. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you look, there's a different join, there's a different, you know. Yeah. Um, to, to redo the whole building, um, the, the roof itself is um, sort of two international football pitches in size. Uh, so if you take all these areas of roof together, about the size of two international football pitches. We've got about 65 kilometres of pointing to do. If you took a straight line from here, we'd take you to Lundy. So <laughs> we've got 900 windows to do. Um, and you know, each one of those has got a lot of panes. I think it's nearly 30,000 panes of glass. It's a big project, um, but it's, it's a technical project. You know, it's, it's the roof, it's the windows, it's the pointing, um, it's the below ground drainage. Um, and you know, we've got to incorporate lightning conductors. I mean, people look at this, this place from a distance, they think this is a huge fortress and it's not falling down. It's not until you get close with this place that you actually see the problems. And once you sort of see one problem, you go, oh, there's another one, <laughs> there's another one, and uh, you can soon pick them out. I think a lot of people want to get involved at Castle Drogo because it's um, 
one of those properties that sticks in people's minds and I think it really gets under people's skin whether they live locally or they come as a tourist and um, I think people really connect with Castle Drogo because it is a 20th century building um, so it was built within lots of people's lifetimes. And I think this is such a, a unique building that people really need to sort of they need to come and they need to see because words don't do it justice and it is, is a, and it's an amazing piece of um, architecture all to me now I mean this is this is more than a job this is a <clears throat> this is a personal challenge now it's uh, I think about it all the time um, and in the end it's become I, I know the building inside out now it's it's a, it's a but it's a, it's a personal challenge to stop it from leaking it, this is your chance to get involved um, in a really significant part um, of not just Britain's heritage, but world heritage.